All right, everybody, welcome back for another video of Virtual Warfare, text-based roleplay fighting tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to be looking over this tier list that uh, this guy made that uh, that I met uh, a while ago. Uh, his name is right there. His name is Koi. I think his name is Koi. Well, I guess his nickname is Sunshine. Um, and... This guy is made this tier list, and um, the reason why, um, let's see, uh, well, I wanted to fight this guy, and because he made this tier list, and then I wanted to, I wanted him to evaluate me, excuse me, I wanted him to evaluate me because I didn't want to pick a particular rule set or tier list, I'm sorry, a particular tier that I thought that, you know, I see myself in. You know, even though, you know, you will see later on in the video how uh, I see myself or I resonate with a lot of these tears. Um, I want him to evaluate me so he can give me a definite answer of where he think I am. I am at uh, in this tier list. You know, I didn't want to be egotistical and, you know, say, oh, well, I'm tier this and tier that. You know, I wanted someone else to do it. You know, so this is why I was going to fight the guy. So I'm fighting him. Uh, the fight is not over yet. Um, I was going to give up for reasons which I will share probably later in another video. Um, but I was going to make a review video of the fight, but he told me, you know, let's finish the fight first and then you can make a review video. So I said, okay, you know, I'm going to finish the fight and then I make a review video. Uh, but right now we're going to go over the tier list that this guy made, which is phenomenal tier list. Um, he allowed me to share the tier list uh, and he allowed me to make the video and share it and then the link. In the description below so if you guys want to check out the tier list uh, yourselves you can look at the tier list inside the uh the description so without further ado let's get into the tier list now i wonder if i should read this read all of it it's pretty it's a pretty long read but it's interesting tier list not that long but it's pretty interesting so i said he said i am only here to share the slew of the data i've collected over the years of role playing i've met many people in different communities Besides Discord and IMVU, which is uh, like a, <clears throat> if anybody knows what IMVU is, it is a site where you make make avatars and you know like remember PlayStation Home, for I think it was PS3, PlayStation Home where you like make an avatar, build the house and stuff like that, get accessories. But people also role play there, role play fight there also. You know, so this is what IMVU is. Um, and I have and I've had the luxury of studying under gifted role players in terms of the art itself, including leadership skills, graphics, and other things. I've absorbed all of their lessons and have embedded them within myself. You're only reading this because you desire strength. However, true strength does not exist without the independent mind. Learn to stand up for yourself and others with maturity. To be better, you have to focus on Every area of writing, fighting alone isn't enough, and you will only cause it will only cause you to struggle against people who are actually uh, what's that side being cybermen level because you're too lazy to and refuse to read a book. Well, funny, I don't like to read. <laughs> I don't like to read books. I don't like to read stories. You know, but I do like to research. I like to research. I like to read a lot of informational. Um, things, you know, but as far as stories and stuff like that and books, I'm not really into that, you know, so um, if, if you like to read, you know, that's cool, but if you don't like to read, it doesn't matter. I like to write. I like to write and I like to read a uh, certain thing. So he says, I wrote this to Deftones, Digital Bab. I don't, I don't know what that means. I don't know what this means. L passion, L heart, S talent, be curious, secret code. I'm not sure what none of this is. I, mean, I, I, have, to, I have to ask someone because I've seen this before. But I never really understood what it meant. All right, so let's go. So we're going to start to level 10. And I think it goes down to level 2 or level 1 or something like that. You'll see at the end why I said level 2. Um, so we start off with tier D. And tier D is uh, the lowest common denominator on the role-playing spectrum. Tier D lacks the development and effective combat, writing, and attitude skills. These kinds of role players only focus on fighting and have ignored other critical skills that can augment their techniques in ways a series of battles cannot. They believe science or martial arts will make them better because they looked it up on Google, but this is untrue and has made them easy to obliterate in the grand scheme of things. They, they, are, only, they are only strong with the numbers of biased people 
This is why picking and choosing your battles play a powerful role in your development. So stop wasting time on idiots because you have because you have an ego. Now I've met people like this. I've met people who uh, think that just because they looked up a few things and you know a, little, a few martial arts move that they can just like fight however they fight. But this is not to uh, this is that part is to like. Um, to ridicule people who think they have skill, but tier D is pretty much people who really don't know the concept of roleplay fighting, who really don't know the systematic structure of roleplay fighting, and come in with he with a little bit of knowledge, you know, fighting, you know, magic um, systems, stuff like that, but they don't know how to apply it in roleplay fighting. They just they just do the best they can. Um, so it's kind of two two different spectrums of tier D. Those who think they know how to fight, and you know have an ego like like the at the end stage because you have an ego or people who just who are just beginning roleplay fighting and have no idea about anything and try their best to participate you know so it's a tier d is extremely surface level like i was saying like like a noob coming to the system they don't need books they don't read i'm sorry they don't read books research writing and they and if they do they have found a way to misconstrue the subjects by finding a loophole to play cheap, to play cheap against the cheap tricks, I think, or, or to play cheap, okay, to play cheap against the co competition for the sake of being called the best. If this is what you think makes you great, then you're delusional and you are a disgrace to the history of combat roleplay like the lame brains before and after you. Being fake can break the real people who have worked hard and hone their skills and creativity. Cheap tactics can only defeat C, B opponent. Okay, tier, tier C and tier B opponent. Tier D can fight all they want, but their tier will only become cogent, cogent when they learn how to properly construct a sentence that flows well. Writing and throwing hands are two separate things, Okay, which is true. You know, you can... You can you know all the tactics, like I was saying, you know all the tactics, and you could be a black belt in martial arts. You know, it could be everybody in the world. But if you can't write out how to implement or apply those techniques, then you know you're, you're not really a good fighter. You know, you can't say you're you're a good role play fighter because you don't know how to implement or apply these um, this knowledge and uh, systematically. Um, writing and throwing hands are two separate things. It's like yin and yang because people who usually fight well type mechanically. With Nudain description and people who understand the power of writing taint the style of role play by trying to make up for their lack of combat by inserting poetic text, misused words, and more. And I have met people like that who uh, you see some 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 people in my exposed videos who have you know prophetic or uh, sorry uh, poetic uh, writing skills, but when it comes down to implement uh, implying or uh, implementing. The systematic laws of roleplay fighting, they don't know how, they don't really know the ins and outs of applying their knowledge in a systematic way. So they fall short when it comes down to uh, roleplay fighting. And this is where you you hear me saying or you've seen some of my videos talk about uh, the difference between playing a role of a fighter and uh, being a roleplay fighter. There are two different things, you know. Being a roleplay fighter is different from playing a role of a fighter, you know. Roleplay fighting has a system, but playing the role of a fighter, you know, some people just think that, well, I got a few weapons, you know, I, I got I can make clothes and stuff like that. I got a few abilities. I'm just going out there and write. But like, you know, Tier D is saying some people write with a poetic um, literature and try to, you know, seem fancy. But, you know, it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really suffice to, uh, you know, making a construct for roleplay fighting, you know. Um, so this tier is the most problematic in terms of attitude, though. They believe they stand above the rest because they, they took wins from cheap tactics. Understand this well. Just because you won't, I'm sorry, just because you want to fight does not make you better than someone who is fighting you honestly. Sorry, but the motorcycle's in the background. Was it just because you want to fight does not make you better than Someone who is fighting you, honestly. I don't know what that means. I, I know what it means, but I don't know why is you know the punctuation is kind of off. Uh, don't do not delude yourself. Maybe that basement you've been role playing in for years has fooled your senses 
to ration to rationalize. Um, okay, basement. I'm not really sure what she's implying. I'm not sure if you're talking about living in your mom basement or you know the basement, like living under a rock and just think that oh well, I took a few cheap wins. I'm best. You know, I'm the best because some people like to um try to win based on trying to find loopholes or use trickery you know they they speak they talk vaguely or they write vaguely and someone who is not that experienced may not really you know they might not grasp the severity of having a vague text and they, they and then a, a person who used the vague text will manipulate the circumstance to contextualize uh, a different meaning for the context that they did they, they originally use you know so this is this is pretty dangerous and this is pretty tricky you know so i think this is what it means by um like don't delude yourself you're living under a rock pretty much or you're living in a basement um so there's an array of things that place someone inside this tier because it's deeper than winning battles so there is an array of things that place someone inside this tier because it's deeper than winning battles your creativity your creativity is shackled because you refuse to mentally grow combat progression is important but it is useless if you lack basic comprehension skills and other things you will never reach you will never reach uh the pinnacle you so desire to surpass. Tier D is what I describe as the ghost of role play. They're continuously, I'm sorry, they're, they're consciously and subconsciously negative. It takes someone to shadow them to wake up, which is sad. Typical, typically role players in this tier are ages 10 plus. <laughs> I, I've never met, well, I've known someone who uh, who is about 12 or 13 years old, uh, but I've never met anyone who was like 10. <laughs> Like, what are you doing role playing? Like, you should be doing your homework or something. Not, not saying that you can't have free time to role play, but it's like, you know, like I, I never met anyone who was ten. You know, so uh, hey, I guess that, I guess that kind of like uh explains why they would you know have this type of mindset where um they let the creativity and uh, refuse the mentality to grow. You know, so um I think that's why you know it pretty much explains for itself. Um, so we move to the next one, which is tier C, uh, level nine. Um, overall, okay fighter. And oh, I'm sorry, an overall okay fighter. Uh, they understand how to structure a good sentence and paragraph, and are adept to. Oh, I'm sorry, adept at combat, but are still developing prose, prose, and a, in a fighting style. More times on, more times on end, they can be blander than D tier since they don't know much about emotional impact of words um well having emotional impact on words it has really has nothing to do with role play fighting like you know i can you know that really has nothing to do now there are some words that have a deeper meaning or there are some words that can only be used to explain certain things but as far as as far as they have an emotional impact I don't know what that means. He said, uh, tier D says they don't know much about the emotional impact of words. I mean, like, just because someone don't know the emotional impact on words doesn't mean and it really doesn't it doesn't um resonate or doesn't, you know, correlate with anything role play fighting. Like, cause I don't use I don't use um like I don't I, I don't I when I talk or when I write, like when I'm writing, my writing is is more instructional. Then I role play, you know, I give more so instructions or a systematic view of how my character is acting or what my character is doing. I, I don't really get too deep into the storyline or story type writing where, you know, I'm asking, uh, I'm begging the question of saying, you know, oh, uh, what is my what is my character holding? He's holding a sword and this sword was this and that. I just explain he's having a sword. With this uh, tensile strength, with this limb, and it, it is what it is. You know, I don't, I don't really get into the poetic nature of what we fighting. I just explain it simply, like you're reading directions. So there is no, there is no reason for you to um, say, "Oh, I didn't understand that." Oh, you confused me. That's no, plain and simple. So there is no excuse. You know. Um, so let's continue on. It says, um, "Where was I?" So these people read, but not for entertainment and for that reason alone they will remain unflavored by using mechanical words and sentences kind of like me now this is where when i talked about uh like i see myself in every tier now I, I use a lot of mechanical words i don't really talk about you know 
my clothes, you know, how the sky is blue. I just get right down to business. I, I, I come to fight. And that's all I'm about. You know, I don't care about nothing else. I don't care about looking cool. I don't care about acting cool. I don't care about sounding cool. All I care about is winning the fight, which is unfortunate in a in a way where it may it may look it may look like that all I care about is winning. But when I say all I care about is winning the fight, all I care is about is the role play fighting system. I don't care about nothing else. And this is why I emphasize a lot on this, on systematic things because all I care about is the role play fighting. You know, um, okay. I thought I thought I didn't start the video. So these people, okay. TRC is when a fighter starts gaining confidence, but also the most sensitive compared to genuinely confident people. TRC typically focuses focuses on one shotting a one shotting using adjective that don't mix well with action verbs and more. Um, I guess I guess how see that's that's possible or I see that's true. Um, I've seen people, you know, like, you know, um, well, back in the day, we used to use this term and, you know, people used to say, you know, I'll punch at you with bone shattering force. So pretty much if you get, if I connect with this punch, it's bone shattering, you know, it's like a one hitter, but that was like back in the day. Now role play is more sophisticated where, you know, people actually, uh, uh, uh provide leeway to, um, not not even provide leeway, but um, uh, you know, show a level of not one shot a per a person. You know, they try to. Well, some people try to. You know, one shot a person and say, well, you know, if you see one of my other fights where um, this guy right off the bat, soon as soon as he came out the portal, he just start blasting with his full max power. You know, that's you know that's one way. Or some people just try to explain it where I'm just going to give out. You know, bone shattering force. You know, explosive power level of TNT, whatever. And this 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 one first this first move is going to obliter- obliterate my opponent. You know, this is not ideal because it that, it don't always happen that way. And if you read or you looked at my other video, if you try to fight like this, um, uh, it pretty much you you pretty much put your your character at the max potential level, and then that person, the opponent avoided. It, then what? Like, what did the what is the fighter who put their max on a line to do next? You know, they they really have no more options because they use everything they had in up their sleeve. Therefore, what can else can you use? So it's pretty bad to um, dish out your your special attacks, quote unquote special attacks. And if you see my one of my other videos, I talk about um, role play fighting tactics. How you know to use. A particular amount of power, a particular amount of effort, at a particular amount of time to you know um, not only scale but also set up um, role play attacks, you know, so that you can have a, a, um, a more effective uh, chance of succeeding in you know uh, destroying the opponent. Uh, so moving on, say they don't say they do most of the they do most to avoid being hit instead of actually engaging. They are the easiest to beat because they are what I describe as the most textbook. Okay, um, this thus having the least flexible styles known to the tier list. Now, now I already said this before, like this is why I resonate, you know, a lot of um a lot a lot with these um tiers because I see myself in all of them. And I think a lot of people do, but to a certain degree. You you'll see what I'm talking about when I um I'm gonna move along. Um, but when he says um they are they are they say they they are textbook like I, I see myself as a textbook fighter and you know and I could I'm able to be flexible as far as you know just letting some discrepancies ride. As you know what he made a discrepancy, you know, I would say that I noticed it, but I would keep the role play going. Like I don't really know what he mean by flexible styles. I mean like, I don't really know. I mean I have an idea, you know, you can you could always you know, because uh, this is pretty subjective to uh, anything. It could be a flexible style. It could be anything. It could be writing. It could be fighting. It could be uh, perception. It could be understanding. You know, so it could be anything. You know, so it's kind of like a vague um, statement there. But, you know, we can all agree to that if you just like a textbook person. Like, for example, say, because a lot of Wing Chun pr- uh, pr- practitioners, they're really traditional. And they don't want to break away from that tradition. However, Wing Chun is really good, only really good for 
other Wing Chun practitioners. You know, it's hard to use Wing Chun against a boxer because a lot of Wing Chun movements are straight and a lot of boxing movements are curved. So it would be hard to block a curved punch straight, you know. So this is what, I guess this is what it means by you, you stick it to the textbook. You're not flexible. You're not adapt, adapting to uh, your circumstances or your surroundings, you know. So this is, uh, that would be dangerous to do. But uh, again, this is pretty subjective to um, what it actually means. So some tiers, some tier C fighters have a vision of good skill, but lack the resources to achieve it. So they aimlessly fight and never understand what makes someone good. Um, well, yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to figure out if I met anyone like that. Well, I've met someone like that. And, and um, speaking of that, some dude, <laughs> some dude, uh, some dude that I exposed one of my exposed video like a year or three, probably three years ago. Um. This guy, it seemed like he hasn't learned anything. He's fighting one of my um, friends. Uh, he's fighting one of my friends, Zodiac. Uh, it seemed like he hasn't learned anything, which is unfortunate, you know. So, sorry about that. He seemed like he seemed like he hasn't learned anything, which is unfortunate, you know. And um, um, so yeah, so I guess that kind of like resonate or uh, point to that, you know. Some people who fight, they keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting, but they really don't learn anything. Um, they can often be worse than tier D because they, they are more sophisticated in cheapness. They will misuse language and flowery text, flowery text and cherry pick the service words, believing it to be good because they got a couple wins off a D tier and a few B tier opponents. These types usually went, uh, these, I'm sorry, these types usually will remain rooted in their ways unless someone obliterates their foundation of rp and pure skills uh well, to pure skill sorry about that um now which that's that's pretty interesting because now I, I i wouldn't know what to place these guys in and i i, I have wanted to like look around with these with these glasses on to see, oh, this person seemed like a tier D person, or this person seemed like a tier A person, you know. So it, it's pretty. It has been pretty fun recently. But I know some guy or another exposed person. I exposed, you know. And it's a long story, but you know, what I mean, like he had his own way of doing things, and I had to point out, like, look, bro, like you know, you can't do it. He fought with me, but later on in the future, he's like, look, man, you're right. I'm saying my bad. I'm saying let's just let's just forget about the fight. Let's just not talk about it. now. I don't, I don't know if he said that. So he won't feel ridiculed by his friends or he won't continuously feel, you know, ashamed. But he was like, look, you're right. I'm saying I should have mentioned this. You know, let's forget about it and move on. I was like, say no more. That's fine. I'm saying, but the video is still up for educational purposes, you know, not to defame him. I don't really defame no one in my videos or try to like ruin their uh, character. But I, I use the exposed videos as a lesson so people won't be duped uh, through the same methods, you know. So that's what that was. Now, Tier B. Um... Tier B. So a beer T, a little B tier is a rare class IMO. Now I I don't know what I am in IMO stand for. Uh, I don't I, I don't really don't know. So if anyone in the comments text you want to tell me what IMO stands for, that's fine. Uh, it's a class IMO. Um, individuals in this range are considered pro prejudice. Prodigious, I'm sorry, prodigious. And focused and focused because they actually love the idea of honest role playing. True. Okay. They are fresh writers with positive personalities and can be found at any age. Most spirit T fighters lack experience in hands to hand, but make up for it with their airy writing ability. Now okay. Now I know I know later uh in previous tiers he says, you know, peep right here it says People use any flowery tags and stuff like that to cherry pick. But when it comes down to writing abilities, what exactly are you talking about? Because right here he talks about, you know, he talks about flowery text and, you know, textbook writing. So it's like it seems like everything, every style of writing is being is being degraded. You know, not saying degraded like, oh, this all writing are terrible. But it seems like what does what does it mean by uh Airy writing ability. It would have been. It would have been. It would have been um, more effective, uh, for effective read. If he said, if he gave an example, 
Like, like with their area riding ability, for example, blah, 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 or they use this, or they do that, or they do this. I'm saying, but again, this is pretty subjective because area riding, area riding ability can mean anything, you know, so um, we don't know exactly what it is. And say, if you're a T, uh, bear T, uh, if you're a B tier, this is, I don't know why, I guess bear and tear and tear and beer, it's, it's just, it just mixes up. B tier. If you're a B tier, you have no business fighting tears beneath you because they have the power to influence your writing and for whatever mysterious reason, okay? You have, I guess because, you know, it's, it's, it's it makes it seem like, uh, Tier B are like honest fighters. I think it says something right here too. They are fresh writers and positive with positive personalities. So they have positive personalities. You know, they you know they come into the role play, they're ready to go, honest, you know, ready to go, um, have a good writing ability. But if they meet someone who's tier D or tier C or tier B, uh what it says. What it says, if okay, which is lower. Um and tier B talks about like flowery text and, you know, using cheap tricks and, you know, um, cherry picking and stuff like that. And using cheap, like I say, uh, cheap tricks. Sorry about that. Using, it's the same, uh, using cheap tricks. Um, that's probably why. Like, hmm. They probably said, wow, this, that worked, that worked. You know, I want to use that too. Oh, wow. You know, I didn't know you can write like that. Or I didn't know that you can win using this type of um, method. I'm going to do that, you know. So it kind of like, um, it, it kind of like perverts their their person, their positive personality into be, becoming more corrupt. Not not intentionally, but thinking that these methods that tier C and tier D use is legitimate. And it might take on those um those attributes, not attributes, take all, take on those techniques and try to apply it and corrupt their whole mind of what roleplay fighting is supposed to be. You know, so this is this is that's um that's, it's very dangerous. Um, it says where we at? Okay, tier tier B's weakness is getting into arguments with good debaters or idiots who talk good. Ultimately, <laughs> idiots who talk. <laughs> I know a few people like that. You know, idiots who they sound like they talk and they sound good. Like I know a few people. Who may seem knowledgeable, they have you know all the legal ways of presenting their case, but when it comes down to their own methods or their own powers, they become biased, you know, or they become selective, you know, when they when they when they explain certain things and they act like they don't know what the, uh, they don't know what people are talking about. They go around a circle, you know, the, the fallacious um, attitude people get when they don't want their um, their own truths to their own truths to. Uh, their own truths to be like uh exploited you know um so it says uh where we at it says okay blah 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 okay ultimately being fight finessed out of a potential win don't be like this don't let this be you okay so you know people pretty much i've seen people like that too tear b people but like, no, i just give up like you know i'm saying like i, I have a feeling i'm being cheated and i don't feel like arguing with them because they they're not budging and you know it sounds a little plausible they just spinning around in circles i know what I, you win you got it and they run around tier d tier c running around yeah i won you know i beat this guy you know he a scrub really in all reality you know it, tier b really won but he was tricked into thinking that uh, you know what's funny? This is, and this is why I made those exposed videos, because those people, probably tier C, tier D people, who knows, uh, used to run around and say, oh, you won. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. They used to run around and say, I won. You know, uh, Shin, uh, he lost and stuff like that. And I'm like, uh, no, I didn't. And this, this, and this is where the exposed videos came from, because you're not going to sit there and run around and tell your friends that I lost, even though I won, you know, that's unacceptable, you know, so this is why I made exposed videos, because um, to, show, to show the audience, you know, show the world uh, uh, the truth, instead of just trying to fight against the people in the midst of their own people, you know, now now I take it outside, hopefully fight it, and get other people to see and judge for themselves, and so there's nothing to hide, you know, I don't have, I don't hide nothing, I, I show all my fights, you know what I'm saying, you know, I let people judge for themselves. I give my point, and I, you know, I even admit sometimes that I mess up. But me messing up doesn't negate the fact that these people are cheating. You know, so you you see that if you look at some of my exposed videos. How much time you got left? Uh, okay, so I hopefully it's, it won't last that long. If anything, I I try to make a part two, make part two, part three. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. Excuse me. Tier A. Level seven. 
Tier A are role players with a large accumulation of experience and have honed their talent for months and years. Again, this is this is why I see myself in most of these tiers because me, I too, you know, have accumulated experience and have honed my talent for months and years. This tier is extremely rare and damn near ridiculous to fight against. You know, a lot of people are hard. A lot of people have a hard time fighting against me and winning. You know, um, uh, these people possess unique creativity and have truly let the box left the box that tears D and tear tears D and B are in tier a systematically understands how to take a win again you know through virtual through virtual warfare I know the ins and outs of really fighting what it what it takes to gain a win what it takes to if you do this you lose blah 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 these people are able to develop foresight while fighting and possibly have their have the ability to gauge a person's skill and aura from how they talk and through the, their choice of profile picture. And this is why I said that this guy, hey, this guy's a genius, man. Like, like, yo, man, like, like back in that, you can actually see this. You know, this is like, I don't, this is like scientific. Like, I, I'm not, I don't want to say this is scientific evidence, but I'm sure this is scientifically, scientific, scientifically proven by or through statistics, you know. Uh, if people would gather a handful of people, say a hundred people with the, whatever profile pictures they had, you know, and I bet the people with the goofy pictures, like the goofy and, you know, commercial, commercialized, um, cartoon anime pics, those people would be weak fighters. Where the people with the regular, you know, the, the non flamboyant, um, you know, non, um, the, uh, the inconspicuous, um, profile pictures, those people would be the ones to, to watch out for because they don't care about looking cool. They don't care about, you know, getting attention by the picture. You know, all they care about are their mind is focused on fighting. This, this is why, um, this is why if you heard Steve Jobs, I think it's Steve Jobs or somebody, Steve Jobs always, always wore the same clothes. Him, Steve Jobs, Mark Zimmerberg is the dude that made Facebook, I think, or somebody, um, uh, was that, was that him? Zimmerberg, I don't know. Some, some, the, the, the guy that made Facebook, I think Zimmerberg is some other dude that killed somebody. Um, but the guy that made Facebook, the guy, Steve Jobs, that made Apple, and a lot of um, professors, you know, wear the same clothes because, you know, their minds is not based, their minds is not focused on, oh, how am I going to look? You know, how is this person going to accept me if I wear this shirt? You know, how are my pants going to look in front of these people? All they care is about their duty, their studies, and, you know, their knowledge. You know, this is why people who pay too close attention to rope, uh, to their profile picture probably don't have the skills uh as someone who don't care about their profile picture you know so uh this is that's what i'm this is why i'm saying this guy's a genius because he's spot on with this um it says um where we at it said these people okay we we are i think we are where are we at um we are to gauge or okay some people right here we are we're right here so some people Highlight it. We are here. Some people. Uh, some people are naturally placed into tier A for their untamed level of creativity while lacking the skill to properly be a part of this classification. So I call them pseudo tier A. Um, I don't know what that means. Tier A for their untamed level of creativity. So probably people have a lot of creativity. I know people who have um, uh, an enormous amount of creativity, but they don't really understand, fully grasp the concept of role play fighting for them to fully implement or to fully uh, let their potential uh, be applied uh, systematically in role play fighting. You know, they have great ideas. You know, they they write magical systems and stuff like that. But when it, but when it comes down to you know the the, the nitty gritty of um, uh, role play fighting, they don't really they don't really have the capacity to to, to sustain in that in that realm uh, which is unfortunate you know because they have pretty they have amazing potential but they don't really they don't really have like the energy or the uh, the long suffering uh, for the lack of a better term or endurance should i say uh to continue or stay within a role play fight or uh, role play fighting community um so it, okay it says uh the only downfall the only downfall to people naturally in this tier is their personality. They tend to be goofy more times on end and never take practice and seriously. If you have this level of creativity, you most likely have the ability to break my tier list and further my research one day. Now, this is I think this is why I wanted to fight this guy because I say he further his research. So this guy is not done. He's not done. He's not done with his research as any good scientist would be. 
uh, you know, a lot of scientists aren't done with their research unless they just wanted to figure out this one thing about the world and they say, you know what, I'm done, I found out, I'm done, you know, but that's that's rare, you know. Um, uh, I, I, I see in this post, it said that never, I'm, I'm paraphrasing it, or it's, it's quote, I'm sorry, paraphrasing, it said, a master, it's like, it's pretty much just saying like, you know, you should always, you should always see yourself as the apprentice, even though you're a master, you know, so if I'm a master and I have teachers, I mean, I'm sorry, if I had students following me, I will always see myself as an apprentice because I I still want to continue to grow. You know what I'm saying even says that, you know, uh, a person, a, a good teacher is someone who remains teachable or a good fighter or a good um, master is someone who, who um, who, um, remains teachable you know so if you don't remain teachable if you don't think you can continue learning then you pretty much stop your growth of learning anything you know so uh so this is that guy and so this is why i wanted to fight him because i wanted to re um continue his research further his research and also for him to evaluate me so that i don't have to like be oh, i'm tear this and tear this and run around you know with a self-proclaimed tear you know i want him to do it you know so that's 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 the um humility inside of me and the honesty that i want to have uh, in my reputation, really fighting. Um, they say honestly, so I know. So I honestly believe only a few role players are in the unknown category of my research. Young, younger role players may have ideas who they think fits in this category, but there's a mixture of things that make someone unknown. One, their attitude and personality. Two, their like for literature, and three, their knowledge for combat. Oh, and four. The application of everything just mentioned, you know, so uh, pretty much uh, the unknown people there, I, attitude and personality, which I can work on my attitude, my personality, you know, I don't, I, I mean, I'm not the best, maybe because I'm just, I'm thinking humbly and I know that I can always grow in my, you know, personality and my spirit and stuff like this. So I don't have the best attitude and best personality. As far as literature, I love literature and I love to write. I'm saying I don't always love to read stories, but I always like to you know, find new ways to explain certain things. Uh, my lives for combat, that's the no brainer. You already know the virtual warfare uh, videos. And, um, I, well, it could be knowledge for, um, uh, like realistic combat or, you know, just any type of form of combat. Again, it could be subjective if you wanted to, wanted it to. Um, and for that, the application of everything just mentioned, which I don't know why that was a, that's, that's a, um, that's a, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a category number four but it's like okay like i mean i i would suspect all these things to will, to be uh, applied anyway um okay these role players take an unreasonable amount of brain power to be down their understanding of the mechanics far exceeds yours in ways that shouldn't be possible they almost aren't human but if you're close to their to their <laughs> skill level sorry as a train if you're close to this skill level then fighting them is a real treat. You can never truly push them to their max, though. Not you, uh, not unless you have the will. That is, an RP teacher cannot take you to this level. Unknown is based purely on your own self-interest. After you have mastered basic and advanced application roleplay. Now, I think I was saying this in one of my other videos, which uh, I don't even know. Um, but uh, probably one of my metaphysical videos. That um. You know, like that, like, like uh, we just, we just call him Kobe. Co I think his name is Kobe. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. And for right now, his name is Kobe. <laughs> you know, so uh, Kobe. Um, you know, um, what I was gonna say about that. Um, but unknown. He said unknown is based purely because so, so um, so I know a lot of people, and you know, it's funny. Zodiac used to be one of them. You know, Zodiac has a, uh, if, you, if anybody knows Zodiac, he's a, a good writer. You know, he's pretty good with using powers. But back in the day, like a, like a few, like probably a year ago, you know, he wasn't really that systematic when it came down to really fighting. You know, he's like more like more of a story person. And he had the skills, you know, he had the skills, stuff like that. But he didn't really, he, he wasn't really um, applying his mastery, you know, um, to the highest level, you know, he's pretty much, or system, he wasn't applying his mastery systematically, so everything would, like, surface, it was, like, an unknown tier D, you know, which is probably confusing, but, you know, he had a lot of potential, a lot of creativity, but it wasn't really fully applied as a role play fighting, you know, so, um, I couldn't teach him that, you know, I couldn't teach him, I can't teach him that at all, that's something that he had to learn on his own, and for right now, you know, he's, you know, he's way better than, he's way better than 
than when I first met him. He's more systematic. He's more um, consistent. He's more um, sound in his um, writing. Or, I mean, sorry, his his combat thesis and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, you know, this, this is something you can't learn from anyone. This is something you had to learn on your own by really being really interested in rope fighting. If you're not really interested in rope fighting, then you won't learn anything. You know, people be like, oh, teach me this and teach me that. But it's like, all right, I can only teach you but so much. You know, role play fighting, master role play fighting doesn't happen overnight. You know, so um, they have to really be in... in, in really be uh in tune with the art to really grow you know so uh which is sad you know but as far as okay we'll be, okay so this is tier s so i'm moving on is there anything i wanted to say um oh oh yeah some other guys the name's guy named cherry you know i wanted to, i wanted to mention him like this guy had a great personality you know he's real calm you know he 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 got a little frustrated sometimes but we all do it happens to the best of us you know but um, his attitude was fine. His personality was awesome. His knowledge on comic was was good. His literature was like it was like one of the best I've seen. You know, you know, I, I would say his literature is better than mine. You know what I'm saying even though, uh, you know, I'm systematic and I like to like I I I, I go by virtual warfare, so I'm more systematic than a lot of people. But when it, but when it came down to him, um, explaining certain things like his literature was like phenomenal. You know, like I really like I really like you know. Uh, I really looked up to his uh his his potential or his um his level of uh uh how he got to that level. And I can never like how I, I, to this day I don't understand how someone was able to write like that. You know, uh, which is um uh, which is which is which is which is impressive to me. You know, so you don't see a lot of people like that. I don't know where he's at right now. He said he was gonna take a break. He never came back. So I hope everything's all right. So if you've seen this video, comment. Let me know you're all right, bro. Uh, and, uh, you know, just, just do whatever, you, do whatever you do to do whatever you need to do, to, you know, to live your life. Um, so let's just move on. Um, tier S, you know, tier S, um, uh, level six. Okay. Well, how much time is going? 40 minutes. Um, so I may, let me, I may make part two. I'm going to end this video now. Um, because I don't want to get too long and it'd be like, oh, well, let's see uh, let's see I'll, I'll continue i'll continue and if i get cut off if i get cut short at the video it is what it is um anyway okay okay s tier level six okay s tier are gods among men they love they truly love the sport of role play fighting you know what sport some people see it as a sport some people see it as art you know me i see it as an art and you know also i i i express the uh the idea of seeing it as a lifestyle you know not as you know uh, you know, choosing role play over the real world, but using role play as a means to connect with people, as a means to encourage people, as a means to, you know, get to know people and, um, you know, encourage them in their daily life, you know, and, you know, try to, um, just encourage people, you know, to give people hope, you know, trying to find justice and, uh, or use, uh, 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 establish justice in a role play fighting, role play fighting world. This is where GOD came from. You know, to to have to implement or establish justice and give people hope that you know there are some good fighters out there. There are honest fighters out there. You know, there are fighters out there who want to teach you and will stand by you every step of the way. You know, because some people, you know, uh, with groups I will not name, uh, which is running around fighting people. You know, um, um, starting drama, being toxic. You know, just discouraging people and you know, giving role play fighting a bad name but god came along and you know started to you know uh help with uh establishing justice and hope for the role play fighting community you know this is where we get the role play fighting videos from you know the continuation of role play fighting videos so people can have uh, uh, uh easy access to learning role play fighting uh, from a trusted source, which, you know, I consider myself a trusted source. I haven't lied to anyone. Uh, I don't want to lie to anyone. I don't want to, you know, make myself look bad. And I also don't want to make other people look bad. So they have a trusted source to, um, uh, you know, um, learn role play fighting in a consistent way and without anyone else, you know, um, giving them, you know, uh, you know, letting them down or anyone just teaching them certain things. You know, they have a whole with virtual warfare. There's a whole wide range of of learning things, you know, as far as systematic structures, uh, rule sets, uh, what not to do, tactics, you know, different things like that. So it, just, it could just help the role play fighter community 
uh, overall. You know, uh, uh, also with the, uh, the Rope Fighting Handbook, which is a website too. And you know, so um, there's a lot of things that virtual warfare uses to establish justice and hope. Um, so that's pretty much um, it is what it is. Um, so uh, so their writing and fighting ideas are stellar, and seeing them fight will make you lose confidence in yourself. After a while, they are almost like aliens compared to what you have. Oh, I'm sorry. They are they are almost compared to aliens to what you know in our scientists at role play, or RP. They take basic concepts and push them to their max with months and years of research and application. Okay, so now now I won't get into this because I haven't even I haven't done the pataphysical level yet. You know, but the pataphysical level will teach people to take basic concepts and apply them in an advanced way. I have not taught that yet. I am not going to teach that yet. And I won't be teaching that on YouTube. You know, if you want to, if you want to see my other videos, go to the website, go to the Roleplay Fighting uh, Handbook website, and go to Virtual Videos, and you will see all the new content, uh, metaphysical and other um, virtual training videos. But I understand where where it's coming from when it says use the take basics and push the to the max, like a fireball. You can take a basic fireball and use that to the fullest potential. Which again, I'm, I will not share. Because it's it's, uh, it's it's just you know, as people say, arcane. Not even arcane. It's just esoteric knowledge that I don't want to share and cause um conf not confusion, but people to abuse it. Like there's this is one guy named Panda, and Panda uh, he's a good fighter, you know, um uh, for what as far as I know, and he's a right fighter. Um, you know, he focuses a lot on powers. He has good ideas of powers and stuff like that. However, his his students unfortunately. Don't apply his powers in a systematic way to make it consistent, you know, and which is and this is this cause this cause his powers or his ideas of how power should be looked at or perceived to be abused, you know. And then one of those powers are is vibrations, which you will see, uh, you will see, uh, um, you will see a video about that later on in the future. That Zodiac wrote um uh, a document about it. That people took this idea of vibrations and started to abuse it and think that vibrations is its own source. Like I could just see, I could see vibration. I could just look around, and see all the vibrations in the world and stuff like that. So people abuse abuse the concept of vibrations and it, it causes people to fall. You know, not not fall and not fall and defeated, but fall in mindset, fall in consistency. You know, and this is bad. You know, so I just if Panda's looking at this video. You know, I really commend that you um, focus on your students, you know, because uh, 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 um, unfortunately, you know, your name is 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 not being held up to the standards that I I would want it to be uh, held up. And it's just causing a lot of uh, bad. Um, um, it just causing a lot of a, a lot of bad. What's the word I'm looking for? It just causing a lot of negativity around that area you know because people are taking stuff from you but it's like you're, you're not monitoring your students to make sure they do it the right way which is you know which is which is which is I don't, that's, that's, that's unfortunate you know but if that's the way you want to teach people that's the way if that's the way you want to handle your student by all means but as far as my understanding perception you know i wouldn't really recommend that at all you know um uh it says okay they're almost like aliens blah 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 that this type of roleplay fight is really seen tier D, I mean, a D tier and, and C tier usually cannot fathom this skill. Inexperienced role players cannot can make mistake can make mistake. I'm sorry, inexperienced role players can make can mistake other role players to be at this level. Like I once did. S tier does not use flowery text, confusing sentence, or anything of the sort that is cheap. Their writing comes off crystal clear as well as their fighting. Now this is why I see myself as tier s because one you know i don't use flowery text you know i just i simplify everything if you don't understand this you dumb <laughs> you know <laughs> unfortunately you know I'm not, <laughs> I'm not trying to call people dumb but like if you don't understand this and i explain it like make sure i really make sure a 10 year old can understand it you know if you can't understand it you dumb you know and you don't deserve to be fighting you know i ain't gonna say it like that but you get you get the concept i'm trying to implement you know like I, I try to explain simply so there's no confusion you don't say oh i didn't know you was doing that oh i thought you meant this no you didn't because it's right there plain and simple there's no flowery text there's no poetic literature it's plain and simple you know right there textbook style you know not textbook as in like you know, a textbook like everything systematic instructional 
I don't know what they're talking about. Ten bangs later. <laughs> that was that was that was Zodiac. Um, so this is why I see myself in these tears, you know, um, because, but, but fortunately, people don't see me as an alien because I don't sit there and try to over exaggerate my literature. I bring it down. I bring it down to meet other people. You know, I bring it down to to their level of understanding. You know. But if it was somebody else, like I was fighting Charon or fighting Zodiac, somebody like that, you know, then I would raise the bar. But if I was fighting somebody who I knew wasn't capable of reading, what the hell is going on? If, but if I was, if I was, um, but if I was, if I was, uh, what was I? Uh, but okay, if I, but I, if I was writing and for someone who did not really understand the really the ins and outs of systematic role play, then. You know, I will bring it down a notch so people can understand it. So tier SS, you know, so how much time we got left? So it's 50 minutes. Um, let me see how many tiers we got left. We got we got a few more tiers left. Um, so I'm gonna just keep going. Um tier SS are monsters. So let me get something to drink real quick. Why is this happening, man? I, uh, hold on, let me pause the video real quick. Hey, let me take care of this. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to um take off the notifications. Okay, so level five, you know, SS tier. Um, so SS tier are monsters. Skill at this level has become damn near a supernatural power. Not only do they love fighting, but you study real fighting anime and more. And then you take those concepts and build tactics off of them to explore other possibilities. Now, again, this is why I say, again, that um, that I resonate with a lot of these tiers. Because if you check out Virtual Warfare, I have done exactly the same thing. You know, take, uh, see the metaphysical, um, the metaphysical section you know where it talks about metaphysics and how to implement them you know it, it talks about different animes or di different types of belief systems where you can implement um metaphysical uh proportions or properties whatever um and also you know i like i love to use the dragon ball z mechanics to um use for my character you know because you know they're seamless uh it's not a lot of go it's not a lot going on and it's just simple charge up charge up power and stuff like that but i also use Dragon Ball Z, Naruto, Avatar, and probably uh, what's the other one? Like some psychic show. Um, some psychic show. I forgot. I think it's. I think it's Psycho 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 Mob or Psycho Psycho Mob or something like that. Where I use for I forgot because I haven't used psychic abilities in a long time. You know, because I, I have no need to. You know, but you know, I use those four. Sorry. Bikes. I use those four as references for my character you know so see i don't know why but this it doesn't i don't know why this is in tier ss because people do this in tier d you know they, they might not study it completely but like they they take references or they they get inspired by um anime shows and you know games and stuff like that and apply to their character you know so i'm not sure why this is like in level five even though like a lot of people do this anyway you know so but we're just gonna move on anyway. It says, um, you would even so you would even fight yourself in mental gymnastics for practice. Now, this is something I also did way, way back in my old site, you know. So if you looked at uh my um history video called um Rise of the Avid Sun, I used to take um I used to take attacks and like you know, write out attacks, cut them out and put them in a hat, and then pick out the ones pick out and pick out whatever whatever ones I picked out is what I would defend against, you know, so instead of fight people, I would just fight myself, you know, I would mentally fight myself, but I also do that now, you know, I still do that now, like, roleplay fighting is, like, in the back of my mind, like, systematic structures about roleplay fighting is in the back of my mind, not necessarily so much powers, but the systematic implication on, um, how to, uh, apply those powers, because it's like, you know, you can learn powers. You can look. You can look up something from science and learn something. But if you don't know how to apply it, just like we talked about, or you know, just like it was explained in, uh, I think one of the uh, previous tiers, like tier C or something like that. If you you can have all this knowledge, like martial arts skills and science and stuff like that, but if you don't know how to apply it, uh, uh, prefer preferably systematically, 
then you really you really can't do nothing. You know, you really can't become the rugby fighter that you're destined or you you desire to be. You know, because um, you don't know how to apply it systematically. You know, so um, it's just unfortunate because again, people have a lot of creativity, a lot of ideas, a lot of inspiration from different you know animations, but they don't know how to apply that uh, inspiration systematically. You know, to rugby fighting. You know, so it just comes out like autos or. They might got more or they might meta game or whatever the case may be, you know, because they don't know how to apply it consistently in a systematic format. Um, so so individuals at this level may be called cheaters when you first meet them because they're completely alien to what you and everyone else does. They break the concept of your science, physics and creativity. You almost wish they did. <laughs> you almost wish they didn't exist. Now I have yet to met anyone like this. You know, Charon was close to that, you know, cuz he used to critique virtual warfare um his uh uh uh, uh rule set, you know, he's cr critiqued it, make sure it was nice and sound. And I'm glad he did that cuz he was one of the people who was on my level to actually critique virtual warfare and help me uh, revise it and it helped me make it more consistent with um the understanding of being more systematic and sound to be to be applied in role play fighting you know so uh that's cool but as far as like i have not met anyone where i mean i wish he didn't exist man he getting on my nerves man he's too good or he's too knowledgeable i have not yet met anyone like that now when people see me like that you know cause, but i try not to get too involved like, people ask me to judge I don't really like to say too much because it's like I can either be too lenient where it's just like I let everything go. Like, you know what? Y'all y'all making so many mistakes. Like I, I could point out a lot of stuff. It's like if I point out this, I got to point out that and I got to point out this and this and that. So I really don't say nothing. But if I do point out something, it's like I point out everything was like, man, I never I never thought that I've never thought this was uh, was a problem. You know? Like something else um, that I talked about in one of my other uh, fighting reviews, it was auto scaling. You know, like people really don't know. Or grasp the concept of auto scaling to just reply to a uh, an attack, you know. But if I'm if I'm if I'm dishing out or my opponent dishing out uh, two tons of energy, and I say, you know what, I'm just going to dish out three tons of energy because I want to deflect it. But I never I never explain how my character knew to dish out that amount of force to deflect the energy. It's auto. It's an auto scale. It's an auto knowing. It's auto scaling because I automatically or I auto knew how much effort I needed to dish out. And I just I just deflected it without explaining how I knew this the level of my opponent's uh, power and how much I needed to dish out in order to deflect it. You know, this is something that people don't really consider at all. You know, and something else people don't really go, don't consider at all. Again, you know, which people already know uh, is the laws of exertion. A lot of people don't use the laws of exertion. People don't really use the laws of inertia. People don't really use you know people people are now starting to get used to the. Um, the concept of time, you know, um, 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 corresponding your actions with their opponent's actions to create a, a seamless, um, uh, 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 seamless, um, time frame, you know, cause like some people just be fighting and fighting and fighting, just dish out attacks and the opponent just dish out, dish out attacks. It's like they playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, oh, I, I dish out this, oh, I scared the crap out of here, my freaking Facebook. Um, I'm sorry. You probably didn't hear that, but I did. <laughs> anyway, um, so they, they, it's like you know they. I, I set my monster. You know, I set this chat card in my turn, and it just that's it. Like, they don't care about time. They don't care about effort. They don't care about none of these concepts that governs one. It governs reality. Two, it govern. It should govern rope and fighting to make it consistent and seamless. So uh, every every step, you know, every transaction or transition. I'm sorry, every transition um, is 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 panned out. With a time frame or duration, you know. So if I'm leaning, like you know, if I'm leaning on the wall, I say, you know, I'm leaning on the wall for three seconds. This is just, um, you know, explaining simply. I'm leaning on the wall for three seconds. And I get off the wall, and I, and immediately after I get off the wall, I start to focus on my ability. You know, it take a, it, I use about one second to focus on my ability and two seconds to dish it out. Uh, I'm sorry, to manifest it. Therefore, three seconds occur, and after I manifest it, I thrust it out and it moves at a certain amount of hours blah 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 which also gives a duration of time so at that for me leaning on the wall standing up focusing um manifesting my power and dishing it out 
creates a, a, a seamless time frame because every time frame had a duration rather than just saying, oh, I get off the wall, gather my energy and thrust it out and in my turn. Like that's not how roguelike fighting should go. And a lot of people role play like that because a lot of people copy. You know, they don't really care about the systematic structure of roleplay fighting. They just want to copy people. They're like, oh, well, he won a couple rounds, and l this looks cool, and I like the way he writes. So I'm going to copy him because he's popular, and he sounds cool, and it looks cool. Therefore, I'm going to I'm gonna fight like that. But they don't really know, again, the, 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 the systematic implications of being a, a, a consistent or sound roleplay fighter. You know, so this is just, it's, it's just, it's just unfortunate, you know, people have, you know, people fight like this. They don't care about the systematic structure of roleplay fighting. All they care about is powers, fighting you, and winning. That's it. So we're moving on to level four. Much time? 60, it's a whole hour. You know, this is a long video. Um, Hopefully I got enough space. I should have. Um, SSS tier, to level four. SSS Terror has the ability to consist, uh, constantly evolve inside fight, meaning they are extremely difficult to beat. All reasoning of skill cannot be comprehended at this point if they actually wanted to try and test everything they have learned. Now this now I have now I have powers that I have not yet used. I have not well I have I had to use Omni once for Zodiac because he was doing some weird stuff with his he had a beast character and he was doing some weird kicking thing. Did I use Omni? I'm not even sure. I don't, I don't even, I'm not, but I, most likely I probably did use Omni. I never use Omni. If I got to use Omni, then you're a force to be reckoned with, uh, at least for that mo my moment in time. So I don't have to use, I don't use Omni like that. You know, I don't, I haven't used my, sh I haven't used any weapons. All I use is Blast. I use, I use Blast, you know, like Dragon Ball Z, Kamehameha, Kamehameha Blast. And I still win because one, people don't know how to structure their timelines, or I'm sorry, their time frames to, to uh, strategically, you know, like I said, it just, you know, I, I lay my monster down, set the trap card in my turn. They don't really know how to uh, strategically uh, apply their character to particular time frames to have effective, uh, effective a counter or effective attack or setup attack like a jab. You know, I'm not gonna just come in out of nowhere, start throwing haymakers out the, out the blue. You know, I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna size you up, I'm gonna throw a couple jabs, throw a couple hooks, and then try to hit you with a knockout punch. You know, that's how you're strategically supposed to fight. You know, but some people just come out just throwing haymakers. You know, that's not very wise to do. You know, and a lot of people fight like that because they think, well, it's powerful. You know, it, it's it's gonna destroy their opponent. I'm gonna do it now. You know, so they don't really set up their attacks, you know, their attacks or tactics, you know, to have a, um, to have a successful uh, 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 attack or a connection, you know, which is which is just sad, you know. Um, so they say they they evolve inside the fight. Now, when they say evolve inside the fight, now I have now I have done this. I don't think I do this anymore because I have I have yet met anyone to who's like really on my level to actually involve but that's just one guy a long 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 time ago my old site his name was john or his name was orion and i really looked up to this guy he was like kind of like my master my trainer or whatever that i looked up to him because he had very poetic text he had a very interest interesting uh literature to uh to, uh we, we expressed his his character but you know fighting him it, it opened my mind up to different possibilities different possibilities to explain things you know to to look at certain things you know so we was fighting one time it, it was so weird because we was fighting and we ended up fighting with philosophy it was it's was pretty it was pretty wicked man not wicked in a bad way but like pretty like crazy because we was fighting with you know beams and you know fireballs and stuff like that but it got so sophisticated it got so transcendent that uh, we started fighting with philosophies and and, and, and different types of metaphors and stuff like that because it's like powers couldn't really suffice to what was happening at that moment and it was pretty interesting so that's like the only time i remember uh evolving in a fight now it's just like so now i try not to uh fight people like it's like uh he said in one of the um tiers like because you, you're going to devolve you're not devolve but you're gonna you're going to be subjected to uh negative influences you might try to use you know so you pretty much you're going to devolve you know if you don't if you don't have a protective barrier around your mind as far as what we fight it you're going to devolve and you're not going to evolve you know so uh just watch out for people who try to use trickery and stuff like that and different tactics and don't fall into that because it's not the way to go finding loopholes is not the way to go you know 
Because it's like this, anyone can find loopholes, you know, anyone can find loopholes in the system. It's not special, you know, because loophole, I mean, uh, systems aren't perfect, you know. There are, there's many loopholes, it's it probably loopholes in my system, which, you know, I'm going to think about how is this a loophole in my system. The only loophole I can really find or that's really, that's hard to really scale is the laws of exertion because, you know, it's hard to scale potential because there is no, there's no cap to potential. There's no, well, I have 80 I had 80,000 points for potential. Therefore, if I use 700, oh, I, got, I got this much left. You know, there's none of that. So it's hard to really precisely scale uh, potential energy in a character, you know. But the laws of exertion is used to help emphasize on, uh, not fatigue, um, 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 uh, inertia, you know. So, like again, you know, so if I'm fighting somebody and I'm using a hook, you know, but you... Like, I, I could get the whole story. I might as well get the whole story anyway. But long story short, the, the, the way I came up with um, Law of Exertion, which you can see in my uh, Rise of the Advent Sun video, was that I, I was watching two vampires fight, and it was like, you know, I ran at you with vampire speed and force. I'm thinking in my head, like, what if two humans were fighting? They'd say, I ran at you with human speed and force. It, it, it really didn't show a level of exertion. So I say, you know what? If I, if I see a hook with Vampire Force, it don't really show how much effort I'm using to commence that hook. I can use a little bit of effort. I, I can use all my effort, which would be a haymaker. So this is where I came up with the laws of, of exertion to show effort, you know, to show how much um, um, effort is being dished out into a tag. So if I'm focusing, because some people just focus, I focus on my ability and do this and that. But if you show a level of effort in your focus, then you can, you can see how much attention you're paying, uh, I was going to say, how much attention you're paying attention, <laughs> how much energy you're using to to uh, to be attentive to your attack, you know, so if I'm using all my concentration to focus my ability, that means my, my I'm not aware of my surroundings because all my, all my concentration is on, in that ability, but if I'm, if I'm partially focused on my ability, that means I could be partially focused on my surroundings too, you know, so having, uh, implementing laws of exertion is good for controlling a character, more proficiently, you know, which I I explained in my one of my other videos, but I'm not going to get into now. But laws of exertion is not for the opponent, but it's for you to understand, for you to uh, control your character better. Um, so what was it? Uh, okay, it takes talent right here. It takes talent. It takes talent. It take it, it takes a talented person to push this tier to. To, to make them feel alive again. People in this range are typically adults or individuals with mountains of experience and research. You know, SSS, triple S, well, obviously I'm an adult. Um, obviously, you know, virtual warfare. Like, I don't even, like, when it comes down to stuff like that, I don't really have to say, I'm, uh, we're, we're on virtual warfare now. You can check out all the videos, all the stuff that I talk about, all the experience, all the stuff, you know. So, this, again, this is why I say a lot of this stuff pertains to me. A lot of these, I can resonate with a lot of these tears, and I'm sure everyone can too, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of this in everybody. Not, I can't say everybody, but there's a lot of these in most of us, you know, and I just wanted to make this video because one, the tier list is freaking awesome, and two, uh, I just wanted to, you know, pretty much review it, do a little commentary on it, and just have fun, you know. Um, this is SSS, Triple S is only rumored. Most people have led themselves to believe that either a person is decent, good, or great at role play. When they are at levels beyond that, if you take yourself there, tier SSS respects the talents of everyone and can spot their potential almost instantly. Now, I asked my friend, you know, uh, I'm not sure if I want to say his name or not because I don't want to, like, you know, um, make him look bad, whatever. But I was like, what do you, I, I asked him, what, what tier do you think I'm on? He said, like, oh, you on tier A. You know, I was like, okay, fine, you know, that's your, that's your, I'm on tier A, that's your opinion. It's better than being, a, <laughs> it's better than being on tier D, <laughs> tier C, or something like that. He says on tier A, which is good. Now, this is what I like about this because, again, so, someone can have loads of experience, loads of everything, but they don't really, like, they don't want to show off. They don't want to, like, you know, look cool. Just want to get the job done, and, and, and that's it. Enjoy enjoy the art of roleplay fighting. Not enjoy, not not necessarily enjoy the art, like, you know, engage in the fighting realm. Like, 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 like some people enjoy roleplay. They like to be, like, they like to put themselves in a roleplay. They like to, like, you know, play with their character in a role play, but I like the systematic structure of role play fight. I like to, I like how the words means. I like how the words can be put together to mean certain things, and just how the role play fighting system is congealed to have this one, um, this this, this unit, unitized um, 
concept of rope fighting because like the laws of auto like you just talked about earlier not too long ago uh auto scaling you know the laws of autoing goes beyond rope fighting to where the point where this uh, i made this go i made this thing called was it's forgery it's kind of pretty much forging the role play results you know so say that my character killed someone whatever right? i killed a person and but they don't really believe that I did. And the judges are undecided. I can't run around and say, oh, I killed this person. Because I think that I killed them. And see, I can say that he lost according to this perception. But I can't say that his person is dead. I can't say this character is gone. I can't say this, this character no longer exists. There will be forged. That's an auto. I forgot what I called it. But it's, it's kind of like forgery. It's, I'm auto I'm auto finishing the story. The roleplay fight. I'm, finish, I'm auto finishing the roleplay fight. And I'm forging the rest of the story with when with when the other opponent had no consent uh finishing that story the way I'm perceiving it to be. So it's just an auto finish, you know. I forgot what it's called, and I'll probably leave it in the link description or a comment or something like that. Um but yeah, you know, the the rule the laws of auto extends outside um um Robert Fighter. And if people did not know, metagaming is also a form of autoing. It's a it's auto knowing. You get what I'm saying? Auto knowing, you automatic your character automatically knew that my character had this because you read it. You know the the, the type is read it. Therefore, my character automatically knows it. And I know like it's meta gaming, but at the same time, it's an all it's an act of autoing. You know, so autoing extends so many levels. Like everything, every this it's like every um it's like a lot of stuff are auto auto scaling, auto hitting, auto grabbing, auto knowing. Although, you know, f finishing, you know, auto just extends all over the place, you know. So if you understand autoing and how it works and you apply it to every step of your role play character, like everything you, uh, you do with your over character, then you're never, you, you would never auto. I'm, I'm sorry, not never auto, but like you would gain more knowledge on how to use powers. You know, you would know what it is. You, you would know the severity of having to initiate a focus. Because some people, like back in the day when I used to fight people, when I first came to kick, and start fighting people, people was like, oh, I activate my ability and activate my other ability. I'm thinking in my head, like, wait, how how are they activating their ability? You can't you can't just say, oh, I activate my ability and it happens. Like, no, you have to you have to show some type of initiation process. You have to show a hand sign or a prayer or a spell or focus. You can't just say my ability activate just because I say so. You have to explain the initiation that it, uh, that occurs to and activate your ability. People was doing this, and, and I'm not sure if people do it yet. Or, uh, so people still doing it because now we in a we in a new age of power. People running around using vibrations and stuff like that. Even though they doing this, they still doing it wrong. But um, it's it's just funny because, and this is funny because, it just it just put a lot of emphasis on the um the story that I made in the Rise of the Advent Sun. I said that you know people when I when I when I start to implement these new laws. Of exertion to robot fighting, people was you know people was breaking the traditional system that was established inside that um uh, that um the robot fight the the the, uh, the site you know so people started to take that but they started to abuse the power they started to abuse the possibilities of having this newfound power and just running around doing whatever they wanted now with the same instance you know we got this you know this guy panda he's promoting um. The powers of vibration, even though they've been out for a long time, and you know you see some of my videos about vibrations, but he's 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 more prevalent in promoting this concept of vibrations. He's teaching his students, but his students is taking this concept and just doing whatever doing whatever they want with it. You know, abusing it, saying I can see vibrations, and I can see vibrations from a mile away and stuff like that. Like they're abusing the concept, which is um, which is just sad. You know, um, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, um. I don't know where I was going with that, but TSS respects the talents of everyone and can spot their potential almost instantly. You know, you can just tell how people write. Like, you can just tell how people write. If they write sloppy, or they they they, they, they don't they, if they don't write in an instructional way or an ex explanatory way, you can tell they're they're not going to be great fighters. They might have skill, they might have creativity, and they might have experience, but you can tell they're not. You can just tell by their their potential by just how how they write. You know how they talk. You know. Again, you know, just like tier A, uh, by their profile picture, and you can tell people, you can tell people, you can tell how people write because, uh, I'm sorry, you can tell how people fight by how they uh, talk and how they post stuff like that. Um, 
tier three. So I'm going to take a break real quick, five minute break because I'm getting a little woozy. All right, I changed my mind. I'm going to take a five minute break. I just had to like clear my head for a while. Okay, tier X, level three. These people do not exist. And this is the funny part when I was reading this before. <laughs> it's funny. It says, these people do not exist. Not in the slightest. You're lucky if you can even come up contact with them. If you do, you need to take what they tell you and see it. So it's funny because it's like, man, I know this is just bad, this bad contextualizing or however you want to say it for lack of a better term. But it's like saying these two do not exist. But if you come across these people, like, like you can't come across someone who don't exist. <laughs> that was always funny. That was always funny to me. It's like saying aliens don't exist. But if you see one, then you know. But it's like either they exist and you can't see them, or they do exist and you can come across them. You can't have it's a double. It's like, it's like a double negative. You can't say they exist. It's like contradiction. I'm sorry. It's a, it's a contradiction. You can't say they don't exist, but then in the next sentence say it's possible to come across these people. Like you can't. Can't do that. <laughs> that was always funny to me. Not not saying that I'm not uh trying to make uh ridicule this guy. He's a genius, but for this tier list, it, that was just funny to me because you know because that was there. Uh, he said these people don't exist. Um, not in the slightest. You're lucky if you can even come in contact with them. If you do, you do. Sorry, if you do, you need to take what they tell you and save it all. Tier X is probably tired of the role play community at this point because they've seen it all. It explains their ability to protect you. You know, um, now I may not be tier X. The only thing I see myself in tier X is that I think people, whatever I say to people, I think they should just receive it and take it because it's, I'm not saying it because I'm, I'm, as my opinion, I'm saying it because I have experience. I have, I have more experience than majority of the role play fighters that's in role play fighting today. I'm saying I'm not talking about the people who are in foreign rooms and, you know, people who, you know, in the corners of role play fighting. People I'm talking about the general population of the people that we interact with every day, people we know, you know, we have people from, um, we have people from Azazel, we have people from BR, we have people from GOD, we have people from, um, you know, uh, other uh, Children of the Sun, we have people chose from Rise of the Sun, uh, Akio's group, you know, so we, so we, we are surrounded by a multitude of role play fighters that, that understand the general concept of the, of what, uh, the general concept of what role play fighting or freelance what we're fighting is, you know, so out of those people, I, I am one of the people who do have the most experience, I've been role play fighting the longest, you know, I, I talk about more systematic things, you know, I might not be the most creative, I might not be the best writer, I might not be, uh, you know, um, the most person with the, with the best powers, you know, I, I, and I might not even be the best fighter, you know, as far as, you know, just, imp, um, structuralizing, um, text to create a, 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 a effective attack, you know, but as far as experience, I, I am one of the most experienced person in rope and fighting, you know, I think I said one of my, uh, well, I said, I'm not, I was gonna say, I'm not, I said, I'm, uh, well, no, 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 that's, that's something that I, I was gonna talk about virtual warfare, virtual warfare is not, it's not the best way, it's not the way, but it's a way, you know, it's, it's, it's one, of, it's one of the best ways, you know, it's not, it's not the way, and it's not the best way, but it's one of the best ways, you know. So I'm not the best, and I'm not um, the way to go, but I'm one of the best ways to go when it comes down to role play fighting, you know, because I study it. It's a study to me. It's an art, you know. It's, 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 it's deeper than what people perceive it to be. You know, some people perceive it to be uh, just a time waster. I just throw a bunch of words in, I attack you, and throw a couple of sciences in, and, I, you know, I, 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 I win against you. But, like, it's deeper. There's deeper concepts to role fighting just like i was explaining earlier the laws of auto and extends f f uh far and wide you know outside of the role play fights um auto scaling you know, auto forging you know, auto knowing which is metagaming and auto ex you know it's a, it's a lot it's a deeper and i'm still learning about this stuff i'm still coming across concepts where like i'm saying oh, wait this is this, this this is not possible or this you can't do this or this this there's something wrong with this concept you know so i'm still I'm still learning myself when it comes down to rugby fighting, but I digress from um, from that. Um, it says they enjoy watching you. They enjoy watching and really get involved in the daily activities of normal role players, such as battles and wars. They struggle with their own ego, 
but fight it a lot better than every class mentioned. They understand the repercussions of fighting negative people and are better at protecting their energy. Tier X, see, and I, and I wish, and I wish Charon was like that, man. Like Charon was a excellent fighter, you know, but he let the negativity of people get to him. You know, he let the people, he let the the, the inconsistent mindset and an, an infallible mindset of people, uh, excuse me, get to them. You know, so he kind of like discouraged him. To continue what we're fighting, but not me, because I I know not saying there's nothing wrong. Uh, I'm not saying to make him look bad, but I, it don't get to me because uh, I know the truth, and you know I'm ready to make exposed videos, expose the people, so other people can see the truth. So I don't really care, you know. The people can say, "Oh, you wrong, you die." All right, well we'll see. I expose you, you know, and not like that, but like I I make an exposed video or review video, whatever the case may be, and we let the audience decide, you know, because I know the audience goes side with me because I, I, I don't I don't have to lie. If I made a mistake, I made a mistake. You know, if I if I if I missed something, I missed something. If I got hit, I got hit. I don't care. You know what I'm saying <laughs> I don't care. Like I don't care about losing. I because I have not lost yet. So I don't really care about losing. Like, shoot, if I do lose, yeah, yo, wow, like this guy, he beat he beat me up. Like, yo, this guy got some skills, man. Like, I gotta learn from him. Like, you think I wanted to it's like one of them bad guys who just like always winning and it's like I I desire pain, I desire loss, because I always keep I always keep winning and stuff like that. Like people people don't like to win all the time, you know. But I refuse to fight someone who's just gonna try to dupe me and you know who's gonna try to play tricks on me to uh to try to gain and win and make me look bad. Like I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. No, like either you fight me, either you're gonna win with skill or you're not gonna win at all. Because you're not gonna win any other way besides with skill, because I know all the tricks and tricks, you know. I know the systematic structure of what we're fighting. You can't get me with auto scaling and stuff like that and saying, oh well, you know, you use two times, well, I'm gonna use three. Then how you how your character know that? I'm gonna call that out. I'm saying I'm not gonna let it fly, I'm gonna call it out. You know, I mention it, oh highest character than this, but you know what? I'll let it go. Because it's not really important, but I'm not gonna let it fly like like I, I, like I don't know what you're doing, you know. So it is what it is, man. Like I'm not afraid to lose. I'm not afraid to admit my wrongs, whatever. I, I already know who, I already know how I get redeemed. You know what I'm saying this is apart from roleplay fighting, but I already know who my redeemer is, you know. So I don't need to sit there and try to uh, maintain this reputation like uh, like I, I want. I got to be the smartest guy in the world because. I can't let anyone look let, look at me stupid. People already think that I'm, I'm I'm not the best fighter. People think I'm tier A. You know, not to, not to not to uh, bash the person who thought I was tier A. You know, or, or looked at me as tier A. But I'm I'm sure I'm far beyond tier A because honestly, no, not not for nothing. But a lot of people really don't have the capacity to even talk about these things like this um, when it comes down to rugby fighting. You know, people don't have the creativity to say, you know what. I want to make a YouTube channel, which is not, I'm not saying that YouTube, that YouTube channel, uh, surpasses all types of creativity, but Hey, look, I mean, I was the one to do it. You know, I'm the only one in the world to talk, to talk about rugby fighting, uh, in this format on this forum and on YouTube, you know, in the audio video forum, you know? So like that's, sh that's just so that should show something about my desire in rugby fighting or my creativity as a rugby fighter, my knowledge as a rugby fighter, because they have the confidence to talk about uh rope fighting concepts i have the uh you know the 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 uh the, uh, the, the knowledge to actually be to be confident and to talk about things like that you know so i should show, I should show something i should show volumes uh for something but uh, again i keep I keep going off subject so um so they enjoy watching okay they struggle with their own ego I, I struggle with my own ego sometimes like I mean, for better or worse, you know, like I try to be humble at, at the same time. I want everybody to listen to me only <laughs> and only me. <laughs> you know, so I understand that's bad, you know, but like at the same time, I, I don't want to steer people wrong. But like, like at the old axiom said, you can, you can take a horse to a river, but you can't force it to drink. You know what I'm saying? So I can show people, you know, the ins and outs of virtual warfare and stuff like that, but I can't force people to follow it. They have to follow it on their own, just like Zodiac, you know, Zodiac. You know, I, I really can't teach him too much about it. He had to he had to be interested in rugby fighting his own and, and, and come to that come to those conclusions that he that he came to now. You know what I'm saying so it is what it is. You know, I can't can't force anyone to do anything. All I, all I can do is point the way, encourage them, you know. So um say so Tier X has mastered combat and may just study it for fun now. They may not be top notch writers, but they understand how it is done and how it should objectively look. Just like I was saying earlier, you know, I might not be the best. I'm saying I might, I might not be the best writer or the best anything, but I have mastered the art of combat to where, you know, I just, I just, I, I love the art. I love the art of combat. I just do it 
because I love the art. You know what I mean? I don't even I do it for fun, but it's it's more so I do it for the reputation of a big fight. I do it for others now. You know what I'm saying it feel like if I disappear one, I, I if it just feels like I'll be I'll be missing out. You know, honestly, I feel I'll be missing out. I'll be missing something too. If like if I disappear, then it's like who's really going to like have this spirit of justice? It's like people trust me to be a consistent thinker. People trust me to not steer them the wrong way. You know, if I leave, it just feels like like I, I feels like people are gonna fall into traps. People are gonna like, you know what I mean? People are gonna be corrupted. People are gonna think differently. So it feels like at least at least for the people that I know, my friends, you know, they they trust me with with having a sound, um, uh, 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 uh you know, uh, theoretical or whatever you want to call it, you know, construct of what we're fighting. You know, um, so I don't want to leave and role play get corrupted because that happened before. A long time ago, my old site, you know, I was, I don't know how much time was that? Probably like two hours almost. I doubt it. But my old site, um, freaking, I took a break with her, right? I was like, I'm going to take a break because I forgot, I forgot what I was doing. I took a break. I came back. People using multifocus. I focus on, I can focus on four things at once. Like, Whoa. You can't. You can't do that. Like, what you mean? You focus on four things in one. Like, you can't do that. So, so I had to shut that down when I came back. Even though, if, if even though it wasn't like, even though I wasn't the boss of the community, but it's like you can't do those things. Like, and it feels like, and it's weird because like I shut it down in a way. Like, look, you, you just it's illegal. It's illegal. You can't do it. And you know, here's why. And people stop doing it. And to this day, people don't use this multifocus. It's like multifocus is purpose purposeless because it's like there's other ways to around to get around it but like back in the day having a multi-focus was a thing to do and it's like, i could focus on my i could focus on water i could focus on fire mix them together while i'm charging my energy and I attack you like what the heck like no you can't do all that stuff this ain't Yu-Gi-Oh. where i just I, I i special summon all these trap cars and monsters and attack you and and, and Attack the field and end my turn, and while I end my turn, I flip my magic card shields and be really light, so you can't attack now or something like that. Like you can't do that. This is not a card playing game. Like this is role play fighting, text based. It's like more like Final Fantasy. Like you can't like you can't like there, there are spells where you know it's haste, it's slow, you know stuff like that to make the um, make your character time duration faster or to make the opponent time duration slower. But it's like. You know, my opponent still had to attack me. I can't just dish out all this attack and just think I'm going to win. Like, no, like, you know, this is not, this is not, this is not freaking Pokemon or Yuki or something like that. You know, so, you know what's done. It said, uh, may never come close, okay. Many, many will never come close to reaching this level due to age, life, and more. I can, I consider them Tathis, Tath. I don't, I don't know what this, Tathis, excuse me. If anyone know what this means, you let me know. Uh, tact, tact, Haggates, tact, Hathagus. I don't know. I role play because they are seemingly perfect when they put their mind to it. You know, so yeah. I mean, a lot of people can't fathom the idea and the severity of implementing um, virtual warfare constructs into role play fighting because people had this idea. Which, is, granted, you know, they are entitled to have the idea that you know. Um, you can we can you can role play fight however you want. There's no true role play fighting system. You know you can fight you know and do this. You know and no one can can't say you're fighting wrong. But at the end of the day, like virtual warfare is used to enhance the structure of role play fighter to have a more consistent mindset of role play fighter to have a more consistent you know um structure when implementing. Laws when um uh implementing attacks or applying attacks, you know, and uh using magic systems. And, oh, see, there are magic systems though. This that's, uh, virtual warfare doesn't emphasize on a magic system, rather than the one that's in one of the metaphysical videos about um seeing that you know life as a ripple, you know. So the metaphysical ripples out into the physical world. The physical world ripples out to the elemental world. Blah 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 blah. You know, um, but as far as having a magic system, virtual warfare doesn't have a magic system. You know, they have time durations and uh, 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 laws of exertion. That's pretty much the magic system. But uh, digressing from uh, that topic, um, their virtual warfare is meant to enhance the overall perception of robot fighting, not to instill 
or say that this is the way to go. It's supposed to help you enhance, you know, how to add measurements, how to quantify or I'm sorry, quantize um, your uh, uh, um, uh, energies and stuff like that. You know, the metaphysical propositions of, uh, you know, implementing um, like chi energy and, you know, uh, the aura and stuff like that, chakras and, you know, flying and stuff like that, free flying, you know, uh, use psionics and stuff like that. Virtual warfare is used to systematically uh, uh, implement these things so you don't auto, so you don't god mode, you know, so you don't metagame. This is what virtual warfare is for. People think virtual warfare is its own rule set. You know, it has its own rule set now, but back in the day, it wasn't a rule set. It was, it was, a, it was a, a perception of how a rope fighter should be taken, you know, and, um, and that is what it is. Tier Z. Tier Z is the last tier. As you can see on the bottom, tier blank, 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 level one. Now, we get, we get to that in a moment. Tier Z. Don't fight these people. It's funny because the way he said don't fight these people, He's even though this is like one of the last tiers, he said don't fight these people. But at the end of it, he says that tier X don't exist. Level three don't exist, but level two exists. It's just, that's just something I'm nitpicking at. You know, just picking at whatever. It said, don't fight these people if you're cheap. They have their own purposes and stick with them at this point. Just like virtual warfare. I have my, I'm sticking with virtual warfare. I'm not following any other method of roleplay fighting because to me, it's inconsistent and it's, it's just not good enough for me. You know what I'm saying? So if you ain't fighting me with the virtual warfare, I still fight you. I'm saying, but I'm I'm following virtual warfare's understanding. You know, you could be inconsistent. I'm being consistent, and I will point out your inconsistencies, but I won't let those discrepancies govern the fight. I won't say, oh well, you forgot to do this, therefore I win, therefore you lose, therefore game over in the fight. I won't do that. I said, look, this according to virtual warfare, this is an inconsistency. However, for the sake of the art of combat, I continue to fight. You know, so this that's how I word my. Oh, that's how I fight. I always give my perception on why and how, but I always continue because I don't want to use. Because I, I can nitpick, like I said before, people auto scale. I can say, well, you auto scale according to virtual warfare, therefore you lose. But people aren't familiar with virtual warfare, and in uh, retrospect, people don't understand the laws of exertion. You know, so if I say, oh, you didn't, you didn't state the, your level of exertion, therefore. You lose, or whatever case may be. Like people don't know these concepts. So what? What it look like me just trying to force my concepts on people? They have no idea about and saying that you lose because I because you don't know these. Therefore, I win. Like I win every time. Like before I even get, I, I fight anybody. I just win because they don't know everything about virtual warfare, which is that's not how a fight should go. So I give my idea about what um what um virtual warfare uh, is perceived. Uh, I'm sorry. No, I give my idea of what is a discrepancy according to virtual warfare or, or inconsistency, and then I continue with the roleplay fight, like you know, like it never happened. Or I try to, I try to make, um, I try to uh, 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 reform the the roleplay fight. Uh, like you, you would see, you would see, um, in a fight. With, with with Koei, you know, fighting him, you know, he said, he, like I said before, he's giving me permission to upload the fight and review the fight, but he wants to finish the fight first. But in one of those, in one of those time frames, you know, he gives a a a a his view of rope fighting, and, and I say that you know, well, um, to uh like to to continue to fight it, I say that you say for example, your character has to be two miles away because. If your character is 200 feet away and you don't acknowledge this, therefore, something's got to be wrong. So what, to, continue to, to continue to fight, let's just say that your, your character is two miles away, you know, for, for the sake of the fight. So that's something I do. And I try to reform the fight to make it fit the discrepancy rather than try to uh, let the discrepancy govern the fight and just out, uh, 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 out, outrule everything. You know, so that's not what I do. You know, I try to, like, continue to fight and stuff like that. Um... So you may um say you may think this you may you may think you know this role player skill after seeing it a number of times, but they are undefined. Tricks don't work on them. Tier Z can be based bested with skill or skill alone, like I was saying earlier. Uh, virtu- you know you 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 should want to be um fighting with skill and skill alone. Um, Tier Z can only be okay. I'm sorry, that's already I read that already. I think this type, I think this type of people question a lot of things. In a, in a more than an average fighter, an advocate for communities. I'm not sure if level one exists, but I'm still looking. You know, so um, 
Yeah, so um, like you said, it's, that's a perfect sense right there. I think this type of people question a lot, a lot of things. Like, I question a lot of things. Like, wait a minute, like, this doesn't make sense. How can you do this? But you say you did that, you know? So I question a lot of things because I like I like the debate. You know I'm saying I know what consistency looks like and I know what sound uh, uh, sound ideology is supposed to look like, you know? So if I see something that doesn't really make sense, like all the scale and the hottest guy I know, this is this out four times when I'm this out too. There's something wrong with that, you know? So uh, that's something uh, that I like to do. This, this is why I say I resonate or I see myself in pretty much all these tears because um, you know, just, I mean, it's the truth. Like I, I've been fighting for a long time. I have a lot of knowledge, you know I mean? I have a lot of experience and it's just like, I love the art. I study the art. I'm saying like, like, the, like, um, Koei was saying, mentioned earlier about uh, how you can just tell people, uh, about how they write. You can tell their level of skill, the level of potential and stuff like that. Just by how they word things. You can, you can tell this, this guy's a genius when it came down to writing this tier list. I'm saying, and, uh, uh, I'm, this is why I'm interested to see how he fights because one again I didn't want to label myself as any. I'm gonna say I'm tier Z. You know I'm level one. Matter of fact, <laughs> I didn't want to say that. You know, so I wanted him to fight with me so it could be a less egotistical ruling. You know, or uh, pro proclamation. You know what I'm saying, but um, this is why I want. This is this is why I wanted him to fight me, or I wanted to fight him so he can fight with me on this um concept. You know, but. Again, it talks about uh, advocating for communities. And I advocate for rugby fighting in general. I'm saying, like, it's a whole community of rugby fighting. You know what I'm saying? Which is odd because it's like, I'm sure other people do it, but it's like, I have a YouTube channel and I'm trying to make it not commercial, but mainstream. I'm saying, I'm trying to use this to share it. I, I need this. I'm going to share this to a lot of people and just get it out there because, I mean, it, it, it's a little. Rope fighting is a little odd. I'm saying it's, it's not something that's it's, it's, it's like cosplay. A lot of people like cosplay, but a lot of people like think it's weird or whatever. Like furries, people dress up as furries, or whatever. Some people think it's weird, but some people think it's awesome. Same thing with rope fighting. People are like, oh, you fighting text, whatever. Like, how you fight with text? I'm saying like, who? How you win? Like, you just say, oh, I walk up to you, slap you around, you lose. Like, no, it, it's, it's deeper. It's deeper than that. You know what I'm saying? So I try to I try to be an advocate for for rope fighting. As a whole, you know what I'm saying? So people in the outside world can have an understanding of what role play fighting is and how it's supposed to be carried out. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want people to come into role play fighting and see people arguing, doing all this filler and writing all these complicated attacks with all these different types of measurements saying, oh, I breathe at uh, 0 0.1 seconds. So I'm like, come on, all that is not necessary. And it's going to make people like, man, this is, this is just too much to do. I'm not fighting. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is why I made or try to implement the old way of fighting again, you know, the ancient world, if people are familiar with that, um, with that rule set, the ancient world is just based off of like simple text, you know what I'm saying? You get to the point, you know, I attack you, you defend, and that's it. I don't got to worry about, you know, oh, my clothes and oh, my sword is this long with this tensile strength and, you know, this amount of pressure can't break it. And I don't got to worry about that. All about it is, you know, I, I got, a, I got a few powers um, you attack me and defend it and, you know, stuff like that and end it, you know, it, it, it's better like that because you get to understand, um, you get to, um, work on tactics rather than just trying to, um, uh, focus on being infallible. You know what I'm saying like you can work on actual tactics, you know, actual experience and stuff like that. Cause a lot of, a lot of fights happen, but guess what? Only like two turns happen, or two or three turns because it's like, People are so focused on, or some people are so caught up in being precise and infallible that they don't really have time to go through several turns of their character dishing out multiple attacks. You know what I'm saying? Their character probably dish out about three attacks and the fight is over because the argument started. You know what I'm saying? So it's not really, it's not really good experience as a roleplay fighter, you know, and it's not really a good look for, for roleplay uh, in general. You know, so this is why I try to advocate for. So, um, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much it with the tiers. Now, I did try to make tier one or level one. So we're gonna see that right now. Pause the video. All right, we back. So, um, as you can see, I try to like you know make it like cool, whatever, like tier X Y Z, not tier X, not tier Z, but something like in the middle also that connects the two. And creates his own tier. So this is tier XYZ, level one. You know, so pretty much um tier there are a few levels one fighters, you know, but they are only about one, only one about every 10 to 15 years, or probably less than that. And it, what I'm trying to the point I'm trying to make here is that 
Man, nah, I, I think I mentioned this, or I probably talked about this before. Like some guy named Dino, I think is I think he made the uh, Holy Order rule set. This guy named Dino uh, made the Holy Order rule set, you know, and it was a good idea because now people have an idea of what is specifically not uh, legal and what's illegal, you know. Even though you know, it pretty much the Holy Order rule set is not systematic. It's not based on a system, but it's based on levels of limitations that players cannot exceed. If they do, it's God mode. You know, you can't have, you know, uh, infinite amount of this. You know, they can't, you know, create clonings without drawbacks. You know, they can't um, precisely manipulate sound. These concepts or these laws are pretty much things you cannot do and in Dungeons and Dragons or D and D uh, timeline, you can't free fly around. Well, you can't probably in Holy Order. You can't free fly. You can't. Um, you can't do Kamehameha blasts and stuff like that. You can't um, create clones and stuff like that. You can't do some of these things that Holy Order say you cannot do. So this is what I mean by you know tier level one fighters happens every couple years because it's like an establishment. They establish certain. Um, establishments and I, I know I said that twice but <laughs> they establish certain amount of, certain establishments in rope fighting where it helps innovate uh innovate um uh 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 uh, 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 uh a permanent idea of what rope fighting is supposed to be now I even use holy order rule set as a baseline of uh, MP baseline cuz cuz when I think about moderate power I think about holy order I don't think about bloodborne or I don't think about um uh, anti saw I think about holy order because holy order is simple. It's to the point. It says what you can and cannot do, and that's it. it don't go too deep, too too much into detail about this and this and that. It just say what you can and cannot do in the story. You know what I'm saying. However, today, holy order is frowned upon because there is no systematic structure uh, in holy order. You know, you you can find loopholes in holy order. There's no there's not a lot of structure. And holy order or ho because it's not there's no system it's just limitations there is no system of how to carry out these um these limitations so it's frowned upon and people look people ridicule ho because because of that fact but ho is what started or what probably or pretty much established uh the baseline of what mp rule set should looks like should look like you know so you know that's this is this is what i mean by um they have every, so as far as virtual warfare, virtual warfare also implements ideas that people don't really don't really pay attention to. Like you know, like I guess I was saying earlier about people just activating their abilities without initiating some type of focus. This started from my old site, ARG. You had to say that you focus, you know, on one of your powers on its user. If you if you didn't say you focus, you skip the step. Therefore, if you skip steps, you auto it. You know, so. People just say, oh, I activate my ability, which is an auto. And saying, again, with the laws of exertion, you know, auto scaling and stuff like that. These are things that virtual worth are implemented and people are catching on little by little by little. And eventually people will, this will change the, uh, change the, uh, 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 the entirety of rope fighting instead of just uh, groups after groups after groups. People will start to understand this as a general concept rather than just uh, 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 a better form of fighting. I'm saying so again they they have implemented again they have implemented their own methods and understanding of RP and changed the general understanding of what makes legitimate role play fighter these role players can tell the difference between fighting uh between role play fighting and um am I, am I recording oh, yeah role play fighting and role, role play fighting a fight scene now I, just, I talked about this in one of my other videos and the reason why I probably like slurring my words and I'm fumbling because I've been recording for like almost an hour and a half, you know, so uh, that's, that's what happens, I'm saying. So, um, but anyway, um, yeah, so I talked about this in one of my other videos, the difference between role play fighting and uh, role playing as a fighter, you know what I'm saying, role playing as a fighter deals with just role playing, you know, and a lot of people think that just because they can dish out attacks and words and actions that there are they are role play fighting but you know little do they know they are actually just role playing a fight scene because role play fighting deals with a systematic structure like again you can't just say activate my ability you know you have to explain systematically how you did that and if you don't you're pretty much just saying that well yeah your character activated your ability okay that's part of the plot you know stuff like that. that's part of the story or whatever case may be but how 
I'm saying in a book, in a book or story, you don't have to say how. You can just say so and so activated their ability. You could you could go further and say how they did it. You know by making a hand sign or they, they did a hand sign and their their ability was activated. But you know you don't really have to explain how you activated your ability in a story. You know what I'm saying it's good. It's good for an author or good for the readers to know, but you don't have to. But in Robotic Fighting, you had to. If not, then you're skipping steps. And excuse me, you're skipping steps, and um, you're just skipping steps in a, in a, in a time, a time, a time frame within that um, that course of action is 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 not is not is not it doesn't exist. I'm saying it's, it's not it's not noticed or it's not it's not presented. Therefore, you know, what I mean, it's just an ambiguous time frame. You know, who knows how long. Who knows how long it took you to activate your ability? Who knows how, how much effort it took to do that? Who knows how much energy was wasted? Who knows if we don't say? You know what I'm saying? So this is the difference between role play fighting and uh, fighting, um, playing the role of a fighter. And again, you already know, it's right here. Um, through the systematic source of applying auto and goblin to every possible scenario in a role play fight, we already ex- established that with um, you know, auto scaling, you know, auto knowing, which is metagame, and auto fortune, which is saying that my my opponent lost even though it wasn't it wasn't a, cons- a consensual uh uh agreement uh and things alike it is possible to win isn't it it is impossible to win against them because the principles used to fight against them are the principles they mostly innovated and implemented into the system like for example say like dino dino who made the holy order rule set would probably know the ins and outs of his system he would probably know uh what's possible and what's not possible he probably know all the loopholes in his system because he made the system so if he used a holy order it would be almost impossible to probably to to win against him because you're fighting the very system he created it's like fighting it's like fighting the architect in the matrix like or fighting the matrix in the matrix like you can't fight the matrix like you're gonna lose so even though neo you know he's the one you know uh, he's the one <laughs> you know so even though he won the war against the machines but uh for the, uh for 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 um you know for for the sake of the you know the expression that you can't you really can't beat anyone who created the rules because they know the ins and outs. So if I'm using virtual warfare, which is unfortunate, I thought you'd be able to beat me because I'm the one who created the rules. You know what I'm saying? I And I created the rules as I go along, you know? And, and because virtual warfare deals with not his own rule set, but it deals with the entirety of having a, a better perception of roleplay fighting, I'm 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 thinking about laws or I'm innovating laws as I go along. Like I said earlier, I say, like, oh wow, you look, this doesn't seem right, you know. Oh, he auto scale. Like, how can he? How do you know how much energy did this show? You know, this is there's something wrong with this. You know, this, this has to be a discrepancy or in, inconsistency. Therefore, we got to This has to be addressed. I'm saying. Therefore, I'm going to call it auto scaling. It is something you cannot do because it, it creates an inconsistency and it creates meta gaming and stuff like that. So it seals that. That that gap from it, it seals that that hole that loophole it seals the loophole. So pretty much that's what I'm doing. I'm and I'm not creating I'm not creating rules, but I'm sealing loopholes. And in order to seal loopholes, you have to establish new understandings about uh roleplay fighting. So you know it would be hard to defeat me because I'm 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 covering loopholes. I'm covering holes in the system while I'm roleplay fighting at the same time. So I guess you know just like earlier. And one of the uh, tiers, I guess this is me evolving in the fight because, you know, um, I'm covering holes in the system while I'm fighting my opponent, you know. So they are trying to exploit holes and I'm, tr- and I'm, and I'm covering them up, you know. So you can't, you can't win, you can't win exploiting holes. I'm saying you can, you can win against someone who is not covering up that hole, but if you're trying to dig a hole, it's easy. It's easier to cover up the hole than to exploit it. You know what I'm saying so. People who are trying to exploit holes will never win against someone who is covering up holes. You know. So this is why I am not you. I have not lost. I I don't. I don't plan on losing because people are so, you know, um 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 psyched up on exploiting loopholes and finding loopholes where they don't even care about the consistency. I care about consistency. Consistency. Therefore, you know. You won't win because you're trying to find inconsistency and are trying to find consistency. Consistency. Uh, you you can't you can't be a hypocrite and say, well, these are consistent, but I'm going to make this incons- I'm going to exploit this inconsistency. Like you're going to lose because everything else is consistent, but you're trying to exploit this one inconsistency. But me, I'm everything is consistent, and if I see inconsistency, then I'm going to make it consistent. I'm going to build a method or understanding to make it consistent. Therefore, my whole attack. 
uh, dynamic is seamless. Where here you are, the opponent has holes in their um in their in their in, in the dynamics of their of their uh their 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 attacks or their 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 role play fight. You know what I'm saying? So who do you think gonna win? The person with no holes or the person with holes? Uh the 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 bolt with no holes or the bolt with holes? What's this gonna sink? You know, so this is pretty much self explanatory. Um say so it is possible to when it comes blah 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 okay. Exactly. It is po- it is impossible to win against them because they the principles used to fight them against are the principles they mostly invaded, innovated and implemented into the system. They consider only really fighting more than a sport, more than art, but a lifestyle with the intentions of cultivating the interests of roleplay fighting for as long as they live. So I'm planning on using roleplay fighting or doing roleplay fighting until I'm di- until I'm dead. You know what I'm saying I- I'll be fifty, still interested in roleplay fighting. I'll be 60, 70 years old teaching my kids roleplay fighting. You know, trying to just because rope fighting is an art. You know, saying it's like martial art. Martial arts is an art. Um, writing books is an art. Um, you know, telling stories is an art. Um, so um, yeah. So I'm gonna stick with this art as long as I live. You know, what I'm saying um, that's it. You know, so uh, that's really that's really that's all I had to say. I'm sorry for stuttering through this whole video. If you made it this far, say um, if you made it this far. Just say virtual warfare or matter of fact, you can say virtual warfare or you can say role play fighting is more than an art, it's a lifestyle. You can say that. So if you made it this far, say virtual warfare is more than an art, it's a lifestyle. <clears throat> and I know that you made it this far. You know and I'm saying, and I probably will reward you with something or, you know, somehow I, I, I'll look into giving you a reward or something like that if you made it this far. You know, so because it means a lot to me. If you made it this far, I've this whole hour. Or so hour and a half, almost two hours, it means a lot. You know what I'm that means you really care about what I'm saying. You're really interested in rope fighting. You're just really interested in the whole concept of everything that's going on right now. You know, so I really uh I really appreciate you staying tuned to the video. So just let me know. Say rope fighting is more than art, it's a lifestyle, and you I, I give you like some type of reward, gift card, or you know, some merch or something like that, or whatever it gets me. Whatever you desire that's affordable within the price range, then you know, I definitely give to you. But if anything, I'll probably just give you a uh a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, a uh, uh, gift card something like that to whatever you want whatever whatever store or place you want to get. I'm sorry, I'm a little tired right now. I'm you know now now that the video is over, I'm kind of like you know you know I'm I'm mellowing out and I'm getting a little exa- ex exhausted you know. So but hey, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more videos. Um, stay tuned for uh stay tuned for more videos. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see everybody in the future. Deuces.